Hi, my name is Simone Jardim and uh, we are here in Valencia Bonita today, Bonita Springs, Florida, uh, to give you some tips on the new and improved Pickleball Tutor, uh, the Plus. And uh, I hope you have fun uh, watching these tips and hopefully learning how to use some of these drills at home. All right, so we're back for another tip uh, here at Valencia Bonita and Bonita Springs. Uh, and this is beautiful Florida here uh, on a sunny day, getting nice and warm. Are you warm yet? Uh, so I have Brad. Say hello, Brad. Hello. There you go. And we have Josh. And again, uh, two completely different backgrounds. Brad has a background in baseball and a little bit of racquetball as well. And Josh tennis and table tennis as well, correct? So again, this is the beauty of pickleball. Uh, so many different backgrounds and everybody can play this game. Uh, it is definitely easy to pick up. The hard part though, guys, it's that it's really hard to get good at it. Uh, and to me, uh, that's where practice, uh, you know, the fun part of pickleball is that you can go any park, anywhere and pick up a, you know, pick up a game. Uh, but players oftentimes get frustrated because they feel like they get stuck and they don't get better. And, uh, and I always ask, so how much are you practicing? How many hours are you putting in and drilling? Uh, and especially when it comes to the shot that we're going to cover here, which is the third shot drop. What's the third shot drop? So the third shot drop is after we serve, the ball goes over, comes back, it has to bounce on our court. And now our intent is to buy ourselves time and space. So by hitting the ball into the kitchen, we're going to get all of those things, which then is going to allow us to come forward in a neutral positioning. Now, as the game is getting better, players are getting better, more skilled and able to do more things. What we're doing here is that with the Pickleball Tutor Plus, the, the return of serve that is coming from the ball machine has got some underspin or a slice which is most of the balls that we are receiving now is with that cut and people get really frustrated because they can't keep the ball down. Now, the reason is, is that that ball is, got, is gonna skid, it's gonna stay low. You guys are gonna have to focus and, and really work on letting that ball travel in the air a little longer. The reason why we are starting where we are starting, oftentimes I see people practicing the third shot drop and automatically, where are they standing? Back here. So then they are doing great that they are back here when they are practicing. But realistic speaking, when we serve, we don't serve and move back. None of us do. We serve and what do we do? Sometimes we stay here, but some of us sometimes even take a step inside of the court. So we got to get in the habit of staying where we usually stay and then move our feet accordingly. So if that ball, the return of serve comes deep, instead of just standing still and letting that ball play you, what I want you to do is work on your footwork, get your feet set, and then get underneath it. And what you're going to come through with that technique, you're going to push just like ultimately the third shot drop is like a dink right but except the part where we gotta follow through a little bit longer okay so here we go good try that's a great get Woo! target nice one get back and again just so you understand some of these balls of course they're going really hard and deep but those are the kind of returns that we're starting to get because with that undercut that's what nice nice absorption there that's it that undercut makes that ball stay nice and low and with a lot of power but you see how every time that full work is so so important you gotta get back it's a little windy so the balls travel a little longer good that's it get under nice and compact Woo, josh you got it nice very good wind is a huge factor in this game because it's a whiffle ball so it's gonna move quite a bit one thing that I am going to do, and you guys can switch sides here. And one thing that I can do here, because again, with that wind blowing a little bit harder that way, what I'm going to do is just adjust just a little bit on the speed 
I'm just gonna adjust a little bit over from four, I'm gonna put it to three, and let's see how that does. Okay, now you're gonna have to move those feet. Perfect, catch that ball up, good. So when we're working on our third shot drop, uh, again, the ball machine can do whatever you want to do. It, it will give you deeper balls, it will give you shorter balls. Uh, with the wind, which is perfect, the ball will move around a little bit more. So you always got to be ready with your footwork, okay? That's very, very important. A lot of the times what I see is people, which is, again, a recipe for injuries or just a fall. Uh, we've had this a year before where we get stuck turning our hips so so for instance uh, and again people that come sometimes from a tennis background the first thing that they do is turn their hips once we turn the hips you stuck in this position if the ball is short how do you think I'm gonna move forward and that's when we fall okay so that's why yes we are going to be using our legs you're gonna be using your core and you're not gonna be standing straight forward like that to hit the ball here. We do more of that, like where we stand forward in the kitchen. You are going to step in and you can take another step and step forward. However, what do you notice? My hips are still facing forward. So that way I can move forward as well. Or if I have to take a step back, I take a step back, lifting my feet. Uh, some of the biggest falls in pickleball are the back paddle or when our feet get caught going forward. So practicing moving your feet, keeping your hips forward, it's a big tip. It's probably one of the best advices, like actually it's my safety tip, tip for all of my clients. Like I do not want you to fall because again, that's your health, that's your safety. I want to make sure that you guys are following staying forward and moving forward okay so here we go that's it so those hips stay forward good nice and fluid and that's a target good good I like that one that's it good and the more you can keep that ball out in front the better so again you are you're free to move whichever direction you want without locking your hips Locking your feet, good, perfect. Nice, very nice, got it? Push forward, there you go, that's it, push forward. Good, get that paddle head underneath the ball, paddle head under, good, there you go. Oh, who's gonna get that target, come on. There it is, got it, nice job. All right, so again, for safety reasons, but also to improve your technique, we want to make sure that we don't lock in our feet, turning our hips whichever way. Because if I'm turned, when the ball comes, if it happens to land short, most likely that's when I trip and fall over my feet. The head gets ahead of the feet. Same thing going back. Because once we back battle in our heels, that's trouble. And, and one of the things that we see a lot is that after we serve, when people are learning, they start to move forward. And then they realize the ball has to bounce. And guess what happens? We start to back paddle because now we gotta catch that ball. Mm, that's trouble. Unfortunately, we see a lot of falls because of that. So also practice, and that's why those dots remind you, okay, this is where I'm standing. I'm not going forward into the court because again, when the ball comes, I need to make sure that that ball bounces. So that is very, very important. Uh, you know, your, your safety is always the most important thing. Um, people fall and really, you know, you can get hurt, really hurt. Uh, so we wanna make sure that you are having fun and you're safe. So that is it for that third shot drop. Thank you for tuning in and see you next time on The Courts.